Hello, 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 and welcome to another Pelvic Pain Matters podcast. My name's Carl Monaghan. I'm one of the founders of Pelvic Pain Matters, and I'm joined today by specialist pain physio, Tim Beams. Tim, we're covering flare-ups today. We're looking at features, characteristics, the effects, the influences. We're just going to introduce flare-ups today. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's a flare-up? Um I always think when you hear the word flare up, it's in my mind, I'm thinking inflammation, inflamed and red and angry. Uh, Is that a reflection of what you get in the pelvis or is it something different? Yeah, I mean, certainly patients would often describe and use those words, uh, inflamed, red, hot, electric, zingy. It's it's often described in a in the broadest terms in the way that people experience them, and we're kind of bound by the language that we can use as well, aren't we? So trying to explain an increase in symptoms to someone else and how that feels, we've only got the language that we can use. We covered language in the last session and the last episode, and I think it's fascinating that you know it's even as an English speaking patient speaking to another English speaking therapist, it's not always easy to to get across the influence and just the the gnawing uncertainty of what a flare up can mean to that person. Exactly. Yeah. So so let's put it out there. What exactly is a flare up? There's many different ways that have been we've already described. If you dip into the literature there's also many different ways that you can describe it. But what you just said was a worsening of symptoms. Mm-hmm. And that is a very, very common thing that people would describe a flare-up as a, an acute worsening of symptoms above and beyond your sort of natural ebbing and flowing of, of what you might experience. Yeah, and that that can last anything from minutes or seconds even, um, some of the researchers suggested, to months. Mm -hmm. So flare-ups widely vary in terms of their duration and their frequency and the intensity. And as a result of this, then the type of symptoms that the patient might experience. So overall, a general raising or a general increase in symptoms affecting the individual in a variety of different ways. Mm, yeah 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 so so and yes and then the one really interesting finding from from the research so this is a a paper by clemens and and their group and it talks about flares arising unpredictability uh, unpredictably having a much worse effect on people um in terms of the of in distress and the influence that they will have on that person as well, so it's it's a really common thing actually that we hear, isn't it? And people blame themselves or they feel really uncertain about things. Flares can be quite unpredictable in their nature, certainly to begin with. That that that's absolutely representative of, of what I would hear. Yeah, across the board. And so it's not only the pain, the symptoms, the sensitivity that increases, then the patient's lack of agency, their kind of loss of control over what's happening for them, the uncertainty as to how long it's going to last for, what is it going to mean? Am I back at square one? Has all that good hard work I've put into before the flare up, is that now just to waste? What's the point? I often feel... Uh, so I often hear patients really struggling with coping through flare-ups as well. They are unfortunately an inevitable part of a pelvic pain presentation and recovery as well. There's, I mean, like 98, 99% of the patients I see have these flare-ups. Um, it's the one thing I can guarantee. And I know that's not always a nice thing to hear or to say to him, is it? No. No, exactly. But I, in my mind, if you expect it, you can plan for it as well. So there's something that we can do. Before we talk about that, in fact, we're going to talk about that in the next podcast, aren't we? So first of all, acute worsening of symptoms. Is that is that a, locally? Do people just experience it only in the pelvis? Do they experience it elsewhere? Or, or are there other symptoms that they also experience with the flare-up? What do, what do we hear and, and what does it say in the literature? 
Yeah, good question. So, yeah, absolutely. I mean, in the literature, it reflects what patients are experiencing. That's a good thing. <laughs> it means the literature is a fair reflection. Um, but, yeah, totally. You can get a localised increase to, sy to, to symptoms. You may find that there are other symptoms locally within the pelvis that start to irritate and to bubble up as well. You may find that there are symptoms that can happen whole body as well. So other parts of the body, maybe not the whole body, maybe that's not the right word to describe it. But you can find that patients will experience symptoms maybe in their feet, maybe their legs. You might get things like headaches or migraines, IBS type symptoms. There may be some skin eruptions and things like this as well. But other areas might hurt back shoulders knees there could just be a, a general increase in sensitivity across the whole person mm, yeah yeah and then uh, i'm just going to add one the urinary symptoms as well so um either difficulty going or an urge to go um a weak flow might be another thing that people experience as well and and some leakage as well so these are very common in fact there's a, a lovely paper Qualich um and their group as well from from 2022 so i think they summarize it really nicely <clears throat> there's you just mentioned a few things i'm, I'm just going to pull them out but you said that people can experience back pain headaches they can experience generalized pains now is should we worry about that if you're getting pains elsewhere or or, or what are your thoughts there it's more local to more generalized is there a difference mm, that oh that's a brilliant brilliant question i don't i mean try to remain calm try not to get overly concerned it's a vastly unpleasant experience going through a flare-up and it's very very easy to get a little bit panicky and to get a little bit concerned and worried and it's very easy at this point to go back online and to start searching is this a good thing is this a bad thing should i expect this what does this mean it can add more complexity to what's happening time if you can give yourself some time and some space it's probably going to mean that you're less likely to panic but for me these are regular typical presentations that people are likely to experience as well we could add and we didn't mention this but ibs into that mix as well digestive components so whenever there is an increase in pelvic pain symptoms it can be coupled with other bodily symptoms as well this isn't meaning that your symptoms are deteriorating and this is a progressive disease or progressive illness absolutely not this is dare I say, the natural waxing and waning of symptoms, the increase of them. Yeah, yeah. And, and the, there, is a bit of, um, there is a bit of work looking at this as well. The more generalised symptoms may be more likely to affect people who already have experienced headaches, who have fibromyalgia or chronic fatigue, um, who experience IBS symptoms. So... Perhaps it's just a revving up of the generalized symptoms that you might experience already. So, yeah. So, identifying some of those patterns that might just be part of what you've been experiencing for a period of time as well. Mm. Yep, 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 yep. So, so we have a sort of sense of what a flare up is. We have a, a sense of where um, you might experience it and the types of symptoms that you might experience. Do we know a little bit about how it affects people as well when they experience um, flare-ups? Yeah, again, this is reflective across the literature um, that it can affect patients' mood. It can affect their coping abilities, um, their sense of being able to engage, uh, you know, even in normal day-to-day -day activities can be dramatically affected as well. Mm -hmm. um, it is i'm just reading through some of the research at the moment so is there anything you've got there tim that you're mentioning yes i, I so i have got a paper by tan et al um this is actually in low back pain but i think it's fairly representative of what we are likely to find in in pelvic pain so they break it up into four themes the first is a sense of disablement which would mean people's social lives being affected work being affected and concentration uh, various daily activities being affected and their relationship with others as well. Uh, 
you mentioned mood already so it's very typical that we see people who are quite low or anxious or frustrated and can be quite irritable as well um people from a coping point of view people can go down different routes can't they so so you you mentioned coping strategies well we think of coping strategies in in terms of a passive coping strategy which means that someone else is doing it for you um, versus an active coping strategy and, and and in some people they are more passive than other people anyway I mean, to me that would be about your general understanding and knowledge and, and experiences in life um, regarding pain and there are certain passive strategies that actually might have a real power. So, so someone caring for you, you know, getting your food and, and something to drink. And uh, that's quite nice, isn't it? Um, I think that's lovely that as human beings, that, that there are people out there that can look after us when, we're, when we really need it. Um, from a more active coping strategy, it would be... Um, doing things like some meditation or some specific exercises so um, clearly there's a difference in terms of the way that people cope and one I think this is really interesting one thing that the this group find is that they report a lack of understanding of other people for someone who's experienced a flare-up and um, we'll talk about this when we discuss navigating a flare-up. But it, I think it's really important to... Because to, you you cannot see what that person's experiencing. Mm. So you can't fully know, you can't fully understand the in, sometimes the enormity of what they are going through. Um, so if you are a person who is with someone going through a flare-up, I think it's important to get some understanding, ask them about it, show some empathy and be sympathetic to what they're going through as well. So, yeah, it's really sad to hear that. I'm not surprised at all, unfortunately, but I think for us going forward, it's something really important for us to recognise and, and what we are trying to do something about, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah, I had a patient last week who said that when he has a flare up, he just tries to put on a brave face. He tries not to let anyone else know that he's going through this because he said that maybe he feels that his friends and family are just a bit fed up of him talking about it. So there it is in isolation. You're dealing with an increase in symptoms, an increase in perhaps desperation and low mood and not letting anyone else into that circle, not not allowing yourself to 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 get the support perhaps that's necessary as well that an essential. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's just sad, isn't it? But it, uh, sadly, I've heard the same thing as well. I don't like to trouble others. I, I just push it under, push it away. And, and often you shut yourself away as well, don't you? So you, when you're in a flare up, it, you can, it can really incapacitate you. So actually, I would say they're the times when you most need some support and understanding from others. Well, you said something interesting right at the very top of this episode as well about blame and guilt and shame I'm going to add in there as well. And there can often be the sense of, well, I've perhaps caused this, so it's my issue to deal with myself. It's okay to reach out. It's okay to ask for help. It's okay. You're not less of a human being. It doesn't mean you're not coping, but sometimes we just need a little bit of guidance and support ourselves as well. Absolutely. Yeah. So should we sort of summarise? Because we have gone through, we've unpicked a lot. And in fact, we've mentioned a number of papers as well, haven't we? So we can drop some of these papers and the references for people to look at if they're interested. Um, first of all was what is a flare-up? Very, very simply, an increase in symptoms, um, but above and beyond what you would normally expect. Um, that it can be felt locally, but it can be more generalised. And if it is more generalised, that can include things like headaches, backache, but also it can include other symptoms as well, such as uh, irritable bowels, uh, urinary symptoms, um, and a number of other things as well that would go with that. Um, 
what else did we talk about? The impact that it has on people as well, and uh, and the fact that it can impact a number of different areas of people's lives. Very very commonly, the way that they interact with the world socially at work uh, in their relationships their emotional state their mood the way that they cope um, so the different strategies that they would employ as a result and yeah the last thing that we just talked about there was about people's often lack of appreciation and understanding of what you're going through I might have missed something <laughs> because we did talk about so much. Yeah, no, we, we, the duration of time can also vary as well, can't it? From seconds all the way through to de- hours, days, weeks and months as well. Um, there isn't a rule of thumb for flare-ups that they last this much time and this is their influence. They're unique and individual to every single person. Now, next time we're going to be exploring how to navigate or navigating flare-ups, what the literature is telling us, what we find in clinic and research, uh, clinical findings, sorry. Um, Tim, it's always a pleasure. This has been an introduction to flare-ups. This is Pelvic Pain Natters, the Pelvic Pain Matters uh, podcast. Please do uh, rate review and subscribe and please share across any social media channels where you feel that other people would benefit from this content. It's always a pleasure and we look forward to catching up soon. 